we are here in Berlin and Villavalo is back on, on the grid. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to move along with the camera. I was told to do this weird <laughs> movement. Yeah. It's um, good to be back, sir. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, I'm very pleased with, for the interview today. So at first, um, I want to get, uh, get back in the past. Um, yeah. I think the first time we met was on the 1998 on the Summer Horizon Festival. You played in front of the Sisters of Mercy. Do you remember that? I think that was, was it Summer Horizon. I thought it was the. Um, it wasn't Gothic Wave Treffen, but the other one. Which is, which one is the big? The Gothic Festival. It was a, a one take festival. Um, was it? Yeah, Sisters of. Oh, was, yeah, uh, no, it, it was, was in it was in Gelsenkirchen yeah, in ninety seven. Right. Yeah, I remember that was the first time we played Germany. It was amazing. The Sisters of Mercy gig was amazing. It was. I couldn't see anything. It was just smoke on stage and a couple of shadows. <laughs> and I was always. <laughs> yeah, but, but that was the first time I've ever seen them. You know, I've only saw some VHS cassettes or whatever before, you know, so it was pretty special. Um, because I think that the Sisters of Mercy still haven't played Finland. So uh, it's, Finland is such a small country that a lot of bands, especially back in the 80s, they didn't tour. They didn't start their tours. They, they started their tours from Sweden. Sweden was the first Western country oh, that yeah. they had a bigger arena yes. for bigger concerts and all that stuff so it took a while for us to get get that stuff I, I do remember the gig I actually I'm pretty sure I still have the poster for it and I do, do remember the you know because I've, I've never been a big pot smoker but I did take a couple of drafts out of, <laughs> out of a joint and I remember it was amazing um, <laughs> yeah it was a great experience not because of the drugs but uh, the whole sisters experience I, I love them I've seen them a few times since they did play a Finnish festival afterwards called Tuska oh. but uh, uh, I was the first person to bring uh, the fields of the Nephilim to Finland really so, okay yeah, well, it's yeah. great they, they supported uh, we had this small, like a city festival called Heldan that happened in a club called yeah. Bavastia. That we usually, yeah, we usually played at the, uh, on New Year's Eve. So we always started a few days before and we tried to find cool and exciting and weird bands to play there. And, and uh, we were able to get uh, Phil and Nephilim to do one. And that was pretty special too. I'm a huge fan of theirs. So. Great. I think it would all, uh, as far as I remember, it was also the first interview we did um, at that festival. That was a long time ago, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we shouldn't tell that to people. Now they know that we are old. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> so, um, um, as far as I know, you lived in some kind of a tower in Helsinki. That, I uh, used to, that, yes. Yes, that has been for sale. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it has been shown in the internet to uh, okay. so we'll kind of have a look around mm -hmm. how, how it was. And yeah. Um, how was it to live in this kind of an old tower and how long did you live there? What a weird question. Uh, I, I was there for about 10 years and uh, I love the place because these old buildings, especially sort of military buildings, uh, brick buildings, they, the walls are really thick. So they're probably not a meter thick, but, but close, maybe 80 centimeters. So it was quiet. You oh. couldn't hear anything inside the building. And it was great. And, and um, of course, I love history. and. There's not a lot of old buildings in, in Helsinki and the, the tower was and is very close to the center. So it's kind of like being in your own comfort zone or whatever you want to call it, your own secret place, mm. while being only 10 minutes away from the center or from the like 20 minutes from the or 30 minutes from the airport. So it was, it was a great place and a special place. I wrote some music there and, and I, I moved out because uh, there was not enough space to record. Yeah, so I had all small rooms and four yeah. um, floors, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but, but without moving to the new place, I wouldn't have been able to do the do the uh, do the album. So uh, so it was pretty. I found a place really close to the tower. It's less than a kilometer away. That, uh, oh, is that it is also a special building. It's a it's a newer building. It was built late nineties. But the thing with that is that uh, it's an apartment uh, mixed up with a, a photo studio. Oh, so it has a, like a, it has a, it was built by a, uh, by a photographer and uh, who was professional and he was doing a lot of shoots of like cars and knives, like product uh, okay. photos. Oh, okay. So it, it's a kind of weird building. You can actually drive a car into the studio if you need all the, everything's built in a way that you can easily do weird, weird shoots. And it's one big space and I'm a big fan of uh, Daniel Lanois mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and his way of producing music that you do everything in one room as opposed to having a control room and a, sort of like the recording space or whatever you want to call it. So it's nice to be in that one space and have everything 
over days, and it's not like a studio in the sense that it would be super professional. I have all my personal stuff there too, so um, so it's good. And, so, and yeah, and the, and the distance to my workplace is less than twenty seconds, so that's <laughs> the good thing about it. Live upstairs, and then then I have the studio there. So it's a, it's a, it enabled me to do everything by myself, and so it was good foresight before uh, the pandemic mm -hmm. that I had the place. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able. I would have. Been, just been watching Netflix, you know, <laughs> I think. And you played um, all instruments on the album. And I ended up, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Also the drums, and you True. recorded it uh, yeah. in this yeah. home studio? Yeah, oh, because okay. it's, it's pretty big and it's, it's pretty, um, the neighbors are pretty <laughs> easy going, so okay. they, they didn't mind. But uh, I didn't play the drums at any weird hours, so it was good. But uh, but yeah, it ended up being sold that out because, the, because it was, I wanted to demo some songs first. I started with Run Away From The Sun. Mm -hmm. And um, then little by little, uh, early 2000, uh, 2020, the pandemic started to get worse and worse and worse. And all of a sudden there was no chance of putting a band together because you couldn't meet anybody. You couldn't do anything together. Yes, exactly. So I ended up starting to having to work on the stuff solo proper. Or oh, then I'm such a Finnish person that I actually thought that a solo album has to be done by one person only. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it has to be literally solo. <laughs> Very straight. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. yeah. Man, a man's got to have his principles. One man show, but you have a band on stage. <laughs> I do, yeah. I was thinking about that earlier. I didn't even think about it. There's that one fellow who's playing drums, the guitar and singing at the same time. There's that one video that's been rotating on whatever, Facebook or whatever. Somebody showed it to me. And I'm glad that I didn't get to see it before because I probably would have tried something like that on my own. Be like a, you know, like the gothic Ed Sheeran. <laughs> was such a bad idea. So, yeah, I'm happy to have the band, band with me and, and uh, to uh, play, play the new stuff and a lot of old stuff as well. It'll be interesting. Got two guitars instead of, uh, and the keyboards are coming from a backing track. So mm -hmm. the, the feel will be a bit different. A bit more goth, a bit more altsy, and a bit less metal, I think. Oh, okay. It will still be rocking, you know, it won't be that different. But, uh, and did you change um, the arrangements of the um, old songs from him? A little bit, but not much. It's all recognizable. It's not like we would have done a reggae version of Join Me In Death. <laughs> It's nothing that drastic, because, because I do understand that uh, a lot of people are coming to the gigs to hear the old ones as well. So, uh, and most of them are my songs, so I like them how they are too. You know, that's the way they were brought up. And, uh, And um, how did you, do you usually start your day in this special building with all that stuff around you? Do you have some kind of specific routine? I'm trying to get away from all routines. I, I quit smoking and drinking, and now I quit caffeine. So I don't have any rituals I have to go through in the morning, which I kind of find exhilarating. It's, it's, it's nice to just to be able to start working or, or do nothing. You know, so I'm, 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 I've been keeping myself busy. Okay. It's like uh, idle hands are never good. So it's, yeah, yeah. Especially, especially during COVID, it, it was so easy to just fall into this dark, deep hole of hmm. blackness. That uh, that uh, I had to keep myself busy, and and music was the savior once again. It gave okay. me focus and gave me a sort of like something to hold on to during the uh, during the darkest times. So, I'll, and the album is the proof of that. Great, and um. Beside music, what, what do you think is the most important thing in your life and how did it change over the years? Oh wow, I, I really don't have hobbies outside because music is very all-consuming because film, all sorts of arts, they're all in the same world of inspiration and trying to keep interested and all that. So I think the most important things besides music in life are, are my parents, my little brother, my parents' dog and my girlfriend. <laughs> so family is important. Especially after COVID, we weren't. Uh, my parents are getting a bit older, so I wasn't. I wasn't able to see them because of the, all the restrictions and stuff. And it was pretty weird. For the first time, we had a we had a Christmas Eve where we didn't hang out together. Oh. So so uh, so I'm very appreciative of, of family and and the you know the possibility of you know having that thing. You know, it won't last forever. So. Uh, no, that's great. Um, when uh, Neon Noir mm. will, uh, will come out um, at the beginning of next year, um, uh, the last uh, hymn album turns uh, 10 years old. Why True. did it um, take so much time to uh, complete a full solo album? 
Um, well, I started working on it late 2019, and I did complete it earlier this year. But because because of the pandemic and everything else crazy going in the world, I was told that the lead time for pressing vinyl is eight months. <laughs> so I had to have the master ready very early to be able to get the... Because I do consider the vinyl as the album. Okay. That's how it's made. Of course, the music will be the same on streaming platforms and will be the same on, on CD as well. But vinyl is the full experience. It's a, it's a gatefold and it's a double vinyl as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, as an item, it's pretty special to me. I always consider that to be the real thing. Yes. Uh, and uh, and uh, so um, where were we? I was thinking about vinyl. Uh, about the the fact that it took such a long time. So, uh, well, I've never recorded an album by myself before. So that's that that's something that took a long time. Then I did a I did a project after Finn uh, after the uh, after the Him tour. We ended in Finland. Uh, I did the project with a band called Agents. I sang this old like Finnish pop music sort of thing that was very different, and it was it was a good mental exercise, if you will. Because it's good to keep yourself on, on your toes and do something different. Playing it safe is, is boring. So yeah. I, I needed to do like a 180. But still, it was great to do something, playing to very different audiences, um, a bit older people, and doing this sort of schlager stuff. It's, it has its own set of rules, and it's not easy. And the music is way quieter than rock yeah. music. You know, It's easier to hide behind the wall of noise. Yes. And all of a sudden being on stage and singing these really pretty tunes in my native language, it was pretty special. So that took a year, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then it took quite a long time for, for us to realize that the story of him had ended. So after the Tears and Tape, we, uh, Gas, the drummer, left the band. Yeah. Then we found a new guy, we toured a bit, we tried to get everything to work. Uh, but uh, it just didn't sound as good as we wanted to. I think that we lost the spark, so to speak, and uh, tried to be adult about it and realized that maybe it's just not our time because you couldn't blame us for not trying. We really worked, tried to figure out, like, we didn't, we didn't go to any therapy sessions. We didn't do the, go down the uh, Metallica road, but uh, we sat down long and hard and uh, tried to figure out if there's anything we could give the world musically and decided that it's a perfect time to end it. And uh, so, I, I guess we Finns are a bit slow, that's all. But, but uh, we, we've been busy. We were pretty busy with him. We did the farewell tour and got all our, you know, our things sorted out. And uh, ever since, I've been working continuously ever since. But, uh, you know, I'll try to be quicker next time around. <laughs> okay. And was it difficult for you to find your own sound compared with him? Um, um, of course, I was thinking of sort of like where to go or if, if I should take it on purpose somewhere totally different. But then I realized that thinking only, only makes it worse. It's always better just to do something and go with the flow and, and, uh, and then and just these endless speculation sessions by myself. That's just a waste of time, at least for me. So uh, I just started working on the music and it ended up being like that. I guess. Him, the music of him was pre is pretty close to the music I prefer. The sort of like trying to find the balance between the, the okay. so like the melancholy and the uh, and the harder edged music and and the stuff you can bang your head to and dance to at the same time. And it's a it's a fine balance. I've been doing that for what 30 years already. So so I, I guess uh, I'm one of those zebras that can can change its stripes. You know? <laughs> Um, yeah, in that case, um, mm -hmm. the first album um, turned 25 uh, some days oh, ago. Yeah. But yeah, does, yeah. What does that mean to you? Uh, well, I didn't even know about that, so, so 25 years doesn't mean much in that sense. I, I actually I knew that they're putting out a, a vital, new vinyl version of it, Sony is, because uh, I, I, I was the guy who went through the vinyl, the test pressings. I checked out that everything's working well. So you, if it sounds like shit, you can blame me. But uh, for, uh, it feels far away. And it's, you know, it's a bit like um, uh, how you would feel when you show your baby pictures to me. 
So <laughs> kind of embarrassed, kind of like, why do we have to do this? And still understanding that it is an important part of your life. So uh, it was great. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, no, no, I'm, I don't mean that I'm embarrassed or ashamed of the album, but uh, it feels far away. You know, it, we were way younger back then, and uh, I still, love, I still love uh, "When Love and Death Brace." That's my favorite song of the album. But uh, and that's going to be on on the tour, the set too. Oh. But um, but yeah, it, it just feels weird. <laughs> no, it is like baby pictures, like, ah, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what do you think was most surprising um, of your solo comeback? So far. So far, yes. Oh, I think the most surprising thing is the fact that there seems to be people who are actually still interested in what I do. Because you can, in the realm of rock and roll or whatever music, whatever you want to call it, it's... There's so much change. The competition is super hard. There's so many good bands and so many good artists around that are, it's, uh, it's quite special. It feels like winning the lottery. Not the main prize, but pretty close. <laughs> Being able to, to have people still interested in what I do. And then, then album-wise, to actually to pull it off. Because starting from scratch and never recorded an album by myself, it's, um, it's no mean feat. Uh, After, after all that time, you know, to actually have the album. I, I still don't have it in my hands, the, the new one. Mm -hmm. So it's in the pressing, at the pressing plant, getting, getting done now. But uh, I think it'll be a teary-eyed moment. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. So it's a, it's, it's a good feeling. Okay. What I think was most surprising was the black sheep on the umbrella in your first video love lettering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, I found it... Well, I guess it's Finnish humor once again, but I'm not sure if black sheep are the like, the, if that's the outsider in the family, if it's that sort of myth in, uh, the, it's like the ug ugly duckling sort of thing. The one, the, uh, the different, the one different in the same family, the one that does everything wrong and is kind of like the outsider. And I think all of us artists and Finns and rock and rollers do feel like an outsider at, at times. So, so in that sense, we, we, we're both outsiders, the black sheep and, and myself. So it felt good. Plus... It was great. It's a real animal. It's a great session to hang out with the with the sheep. Never had that pleasure before. And you did not change your dog um, with the sheep. No, 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 not yet, not yet. But it was quite interesting. And I think it's good to do things differently. You have to have to take risks. But if you go down the sort of like cliche route of doing whatever, that's you know, it's not my cup of tea. It's it's. Good to, you know, balls out and go wrong than, than playing it safe. Playing it safe is still not my cup of tea. Okay. And um, was it surprising that um, after announcing the new tu tour, it has been sold out at several places? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's weird because you, you can never tell in advance. We were ho of, of course, we were hoping everybody, you know, the booking agents and, and the manager, Auntie. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it feels weird. It feels unreal. And uh, um, and also at the same time it feels great because of course I'm nervous uh, as well as being excited about ne next year. So it's, it's great to know in advance that there will be some people at the gigs. There's quite a few concerts have been sold out, and then it's great for the festivals and yes. and all that. I think next year will be it'll be busy, but it'll be it'll be it'll be good. I'm sure. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm a bit scared, as I should be. It's, it's the healthy kind of being scared about all of it. Okay, good, Rick. Um, um, the last one, um, uh, at the time uh, him broke up, um, it was supposed that um, a new album uh, should come out. Um, uh, are there any songs left that you um, used for the, your solo album? No. Uh, picked them or some ideas up? We, we didn't get so far with him as to... We, we worked on some skeletal ideas of, for songs at the rehearsal place, but we never, we never went into the studio and worked oh. that stuff out. And, uh, and uh, I think I started from scratch right after with, uh, with Run Away From The Sun. And then I think Love Letting was one of the parts of Love Letting. The, the, those were the first ideas I had for, for Neo Noir. But, um, but no, yeah, yeah, I started thinking about it. But no, I, I also felt that it's not right 
Mm. Yeah, well. Because it, it feels that, you know, that stuff belonged to him. That belongs to that moment. And if it didn't work with him, why shouldn't it, why would it work with me, you know? So mm. maybe, maybe that's for the time for the reunion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you are thinking about that? Pardon me? Uh, you are thinking reunion. about a reunion? No, we, we, uh, because we're in... Uh, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think there's any reason to do anything like that. But, uh, but I never say never. You know, him were a very important part of, uh, of, of my life, and I'm happy that uh, there's so many people into the band. So I wouldn't say no if, if there's a good reason or a good cause. So a good, okay. Yeah, but, but, but I need to concentrate on this first. Yeah, you know, sure. I think, I think it's important, and it's important mentally um, to do this right and really put all my effort and all my energy into this and see where it, can, where it takes me, you know, where it leads. Oh. And you are still friends with um, the band? Yeah, yeah, we haven't been in touch so much. I'm, uh, I'm, Miga is the only guy I'm really, we get to, we get together on an occasion and sit down and shoot the shit. And he was kind of the, also one of the guys that came to my studio to take a listen to the songs oh. and give his soul like the stamp of approval. Saying that, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good enough. You're all right. <laughs> so okay. it's important. He's uh, one of my oldest friends and uh, in, in the world. So. Uh, It was helpful, and it's you know, besides music, he's an important person, and, uh, and in my life. So, so I'm glad that we're still friends. Oh, great. Okay. So we have the next. Step. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. That was easy. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much.